Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a minute since I've really touched Impulse. I uh, didn't do anything for about six weeks after I came back from Reno. I was really thrashing hard and spending a lot of time doing this where I could have been doing other stuff, and I, and I was sort of neglecting those things. So I took a little time off and did that. But uh, now it's time to get back to work. So um, what I think I'm going to do is finish closing out the elevators. So as you might remember, I ended up cutting those elevator bottoms off because I didn't like the way they fit. So I've got one elevator half lower skin. That's all done, ready to be trimmed. Haven't popped it loose from the mold yet. And then the other side is ready to go over here. So mold's all waxed and PVA. I've got the core cut, got the carbon cut. So I'm gonna start laying out some resin there and then slap that together and get it under vacuum. And then uh, hopefully tomorrow, we're gonna flip that over and uh, get the elevator skins trimmed and maybe get them both bonded in. So let's get to it. All right, so I wet out my carbon between plastic, you know, nothing special there, same thing as I always do. And I got uh, three layers down on the outside of the mold into my eighth inch PVC core. And if you look real close, you can see a bunch of holes uh, dimpled in it. I use one of these woodpecker tools. Um, they're made for RC modeling. You're supposed to roll them over balsa wood and it helps when you cover with the heat shrink film to, you know, not have bubbles, but it works fantastic for perforating this foam. It just helps the resin soak in just a little bit so you get a little bit better adhesion. So that's all good. Got the edges all beveled. So the inner layers will lay down nice. So I'm gonna pop that inner layer on and then uh, get the center vacuum and we'll be done. All right, that is cranked down under vacuum. It all looks good. Pulling down nice and tight. All my seams look good. So we'll just let that sit there for, well, probably uh, 10 hours or so, and then we'll shut that off. So we've uh, got the other one over there. I'm going to start trimming on that one. All right, both lower elevator halves are done, and... Um, they're rough trimmed. I haven't popped them out of the mold yet, but I will soon. But uh, I'm going to stop working on the elevators because um, I finally have upper wing molds. I just went and picked them up the other day, and uh, there are two two uh, two molds there. It's uh, they're both upper, so it looks like they're together, but they're not. They're just sitting there. They're both um, upper. So the plan is to uh, take those outside today, and I'm going to scrub the PVA off them. They are fresh off of the mold, so they're still have PVA all over them. And then I've got to sort of rearrange the shop and figure out how I'm going to get, um, you know, both of those molds in here, along with the fuselage. The fuselage might have to go somewhere um, until then. But uh, I've got about uh, 30 feet from, from that back door over there to the door in the house over there. And I think I can get the molds kind of kitty corner across here. Still have to build stands for them and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I kind of stopped on the fuselage because I really needed a wing tool to uh, fit. I've got to cut out in the fuselage where the wing goes and I can start putting bulkheads and things like that. So fortunately, Eric, um, who built my wing tools, um, also built me a, uh, a center section test mold. So we weren't sure exactly how we were going to build the molds for this. Um, my main criteria were that they were gonna to have to be able to take some temperature, but also they had to be light enough so that I could lift them. You know, I don't have an overhead crane in here or any way to really move these around. So it's just, uh, you know, myself and my son, Ryan, and maybe a couple of buddies to move things around. So they have to be reasonably light. Uh, so what we ended up doing is, um, they're all carbon molds with a honeycomb core mm -hmm. and then a little bit of a stiffener around them. So they're very, very light. I can actually pick one up by myself and uh, they're very stiff. So they're gonna get a, a backing, you know, metal backing around with um, pads all the way around so I can get them perfectly straight and perfectly aligned. But what this is gonna let me do is to build a, a narrow test section. And uh, not only can I figure out the spar placement because my knees have to go over the spar, landing gear attach the spar. So spar placement is pretty critical. But with that piece, I will then be able to use that to cut out the bottom of the fuselage, fit the wing to it without obviously having to try to have the full wing underneath the fuselage. So. Clearly, I don't have enough room in here to do that. So this is going to let me keep moving forward and um, 
and I can still make progress before I have to finally bite the bullet and move to a bigger shop. I'm really trying to hold off on that as long as possible. Um, these molds are foam, uh, I believe a five pound tooling foam, um, bagged with carbon on all sides. And then uh, uh, a tooling coat that got spread in here, it's about an inch thick. That gets machined roughly. Then we covered that with gel coat and then machined the gel coat. Now you can see this didn't get a finish pass, so it's not super smooth, but uh, actually pretty nice. You could easily make a usable part out of that um, with a peel ply finish. So I'm excited about that. For those of you that are wondering, um, that's, that's what the root airfoil looks like. It's not a numbered airfoil. That's a completely custom airfoil um, root to tip um, done by my good friend and collaborator, Steve Clausen. And uh, we have high hopes for that. That's uh, that and a couple other things are kind of the secret sauce in the whole airplane. We, we think that's going to make it go fast, but you know, we'll see. All right, well, uh, I'm going to open up the shop and get these outside and start scrubbing. All right, so here's the inside of the molds, and as you can see, there's still PVA all over them. So we're going to scrub them up and then uh, take a look and see what we have to polish. And I got a little bit of trimming to do on the ends. So uh, let's get scrubbing. All right, the molds are all washed up and uh, got the PVA scrubbed off. And you can see they shine pretty good. Um, I believe the plugs were sanded to about a 400 fit grit finish. So um, really nice. I could probably, um, you know, not do a whole lot. In fact, I'm not gonna do a whole lot. I'll probably sand it to maybe 600 and then I will polish that and it'll be good to go. Um, I trimmed up the ends down there. There was a long end hanging off right there. I got that on both sides, so that's done. So I'm just leaving them, uh, actually they're going to go in right now. They don't need to be out in the sun for very long. We've only been out here maybe 10 minutes, but I just want to drain the majority of the water out and then they're going to go back inside. So, uh, cool, man. I'm stoked. They look really good. All right. Well, I've done a little bit of reorganization. You can see that the layup table that used to be over here, it's now pulled out and it's here. Um, I used to have a bunch of uh, extra material laying underneath it and that's all put away in my shed. So this is all in an effort to, you know, economize space and try to cram wing molds in here. So uh, I still need to build stands for my wing mold. I've got them leaning back over there. But what I'm working on now is um, Eric, the same guy that did my wing molds, <clears throat> has cut me a 24 inch wide center section test mold, both upper and lower. And uh, that's so I can build a uh, a stub wing that I can essentially use to fit and cut out the bottom of the fuselage without having to obviously carry the whole wing around. So um, I've got this one sanded um, down through 320 and it's um, it's roughly machined gel coat. So the surface is not super smooth. There are a few imperfections in it. Uh, you can see I've got a coat of wax on there. I'm getting ready to buff that off. And uh, I'll put a few coats of wax on it and then I'm gonna put down a layer of peel ply, a few layers of carbon. I'm undecided whether I'm gonna put core in it or not. I might just put a couple of uh, structural members in between the skins to call it good. All it has to do is hold its shape. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, really have any surface finish or anything like that. So again, just a fit check part. Uh, here's the other mold. It's real dusty, but you can see it's not super smooth, but um, I think I can get it into a usable surface in about 15 minutes worth of sanding. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna polish the wax off of that before it gets too hard, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so this is the finish with four coats of wax on the mold and some PVA. And you can see there's still some little imperfections in there, but again, I'm not really worried about that. Um, I've also sprayed the surface with this 3M71 high tack adhesive, and what that does, that dissolves in the resin. So unlike 77, which is really not for epoxy composite layups, um, I use the 71. So now I'm just rolling out some peel ply and you can see that I'm just basically rolling it on here and I'll just come back with my hand. And since I have that um, 71 on here, all the wrinkles and everything gets kind of smooths out real nice. So I'll push it in here like that, get all of those wrinkles out. 
Get it pushed up in here in the leading edge. And uh, that's it. So that will be the outer surface of the part. And uh, that'll give me a peel ply finish, which is fine. Again, I'm not going for gloss. So I'm gonna come back and trim this off. And then I think I'm gonna start with the layup. So I'm wetting out the peel ply, with, you know, just my roller and uh, dumping the resin right on it. Um, I don't really care how much resin is in this part. I really don't even care if it looks good. So not really trying to conserve weight here, just get it laid up. Two layers of carbon down, so I'm halfway done. And you can see it's really resin rich. I'm not going to vacuum bag this down. So I won't have any, um, you know, any help to pull out any voids. So I'm just making making it very goopy. It's a really simple shape, so it won't be any big deal, but I'm just making sure it's well saturated. So uh, two more layers going on, and then I will put peel ply on the inside. All four coats on and peel ply on. All looks good. Um, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna trim some of the excess peel ply there, and then we're just gonna let it sit overnight. Bottom skin turned out nice. I pulled off the peel ply this morning. It's all good. Um, I decided to go ahead and put some core in here because uh, the more I think about it, the more I'm probably going to sit on this wing when I'm putting in the the rear seat back bulkhead. So I want to be able to sit and find out where my knees fall because they've got to go up over the spar. So um, took my woodpecker, which is just a little you know pounce tool, and poked a bunch of holes in this eighth inch PVC core. Um, beveled the edges a little bit. Put a coat of thickened resin on the core and then another coat of just neat resin that and i'm going to lay in one layer of carbon um i almost didn't record this you know because i'm bad at that i get going and i don't stop so stopped mid ply here and um, i'm going to roll that out and then i'll show you what it looks like when the core is in there there's the one layer of inner carbon over the core and you can see where i panned it down how it um you know follows contour pretty well Normally I would vacuum bag something like this, but again, this kind of doesn't matter. So now peel pie is gonna go on and then I'm gonna put some plastic over that and a little bit of weight. That core has a little bit of stiffness to it. And I just wanna make sure that it doesn't lift up off the, the inner laminate. So um, just a couple minutes here and I'll be done and I'll show you what that looks like. Peel ply all wet out, everything's sticking down good. Um, I think it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna throw some of this plastic over it and then I'm gonna just throw my uh, flexible snake weights on top of it and hold it down. And then I think we're going to put some heat on it tonight. Um, Ryan's been working on sanding this upper mold and he's waxing it right now. So we're going to try to get that laid up today too. Um, both, you know, outer skin, core, and then inner, and then get heat on that as well. And then maybe if we're lucky, we can join the two um, tomorrow and maybe even start fitting. All right, that's all put to bed now. Just got my weight bags on top of some plastic so the weight bags don't stick to the peel ply. And I got my ghetto heat lamp on and then I'm gonna crank up the heat. It's on 70 in here now, but I think I'm gonna turn it up to like 85. Um, not really that big a deal for this one because we're not gonna do anything with it till tomorrow. So it'll have, um, you know, all day and all night to cure. Uh, but we are gonna try to get this laid up. So one coat of wax on there, probably three more coats of wax and then a heavy coat of, um, PVA and it'll be plenty. So that's what I did on this one. And I lifted up the corner to see if it was going to release and it was popping right up super easy. So all good. All right, that layup is cured. <clears throat> I pulled the peel ply off and just did a quick trim here. And uh, I've still got to trim that one. And I think I'm just going to put a simple foam piece in between here as a vertical web, you know, makeshift spar, and join the two. So uh, I don't think I'm going to trim the edges until after it's done. So I guess we'll get going on that. 
Right there it is, popped loose with the peel ply removed and uh, the finish is just fine for what I'm gonna do. So I'm happy with that. Um, if you look close, um, you guys probably already realize this, but there's dihedral in the airplane. So you can just see the dihedral angle in the part there. That's double what it is because obviously that's the top skin flipped over in the top skin mold, but um, about three degrees there. So uh, that accurately represents that. All right, lower skin out and that all looks good. And uh, I have, let me show you, there was a machined trailing edge mark um, in the mold. And uh, since I put peel ply down first before I put the carbon down, it filled that in in the part so you can't see it. So what I've done here is I've just marked it with tape and I am gonna cut the trailing edges uh, even so they'll close properly because there's not enough room in the mold for the cloth run out. So if I leave all the extra cloth, um, it's gonna leave the trailing edge fat. Not really that big a deal, but it's not the right way to do it. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and um, trim this side up and then I will have to transfer that mark to that side and trim that side up. And, uh, so still on track to join it here in the next, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Okay, I made a couple of representative spar sections out of uh, one inch foam. And um, these obviously aren't the real spars, but they are in the correct locations for the inner structure. So um, got those bonded in the lower, just a little bit of a resin and micro. And we're gonna let those cure for a couple of hours till they're stiff and then we'll fit them and put the tops on in a little bit. Okay, just popped it out, it's all good. I got a little bit of sanding to do on the edges here, a little bit of leaning edge, and uh, we'll start getting it fit up. Um, that's gonna be it for this video. Next one, we're gonna start cutting into the fuselage and making stands for the wing mold so I can get the wing mold set up in here. Right now, I am gonna clean up my disaster of a shot because it was just like a whirlwind thrash in here. So we're gonna get going on that, and um, we'll see you real soon in the next episode.